Today we learn to make rich and healthy nutritious potting mix for our containers. This is coco peat here. Aged manure. A fine base made up of coco peat aged manures from goat, cow, horses, chickens, camels, buffaloes, whatever you can get. I have added almost all the aged manures here whatever I could get, whatever you can get, please get them. They are very, very important. And a vermicompost. Now that is the base. Vermicompost is very, very important. Uh, especially if you're a lazy gardener, make sure that vermicompost is uh, more in ratio than other ingredients because it takes care of the ecosystem. Uh, it creates an ecosystem rather and uh, activates nitrogen. Now you mix this very well. If there are any artificial particles, you need to remove them. This is a tiny plastic, you can see. Tiniest of plastic can block the aeration of your soil. So it is important that you remove it. You need to be very careful with your potting mix. Earth has her own ecosystem. She invites nutrition. Mm -hmm. She has her own channels of doing so. Insects, mites, birds, bacteria, viruses all give something to the soil. But that takes 700 years. Now we are doing this to forage our food, which we will grow organically on our terrace. So we need to be very careful. After a very closed uh, uh, observation of how plants grow and respond, I have created this recipe of potting mix. Though, I can tell you that there isn't a single way to determine the best mix for your plants. But then this has worked for me. This is Neem Khali mixed with Pseudomonas. Neem Khali makes sure that the immunity of my mix is very strong. And Pseudomonas is a fungus. Now, I am adding Diactomaceous Earth. Diactomaceous Earth is great as a insect repellent but i'm not using it like that here because i'm mixing it inside if you want to avoid insects you need to put it on the top layer but i'm mixing it because i am using its ability for moisture retention in my mix this is perlite perlite helps insulate plants roots from extreme temperature fluctuations it's not necessary but if you have it or is it or it is easily accessible, then please add perlite. Otherwise, drop it. After perlite, I'm adding a little. This is this is lime. It increases the calcium level in my soil. Most of the plants that I'm going to grow here would need calcium to grow. So I am adding calcium. After calcium, this is gypsum. Now, gypsum maintains the calcium magnesium ratio in the potting mix so do add gypsum it's it's really mandatory to add gypsum bone meal bone meal not only provides calcium to the soil to the mix but it also invites a lot of microorganisms that give lots of micronutrients to the plants to the vegetables that you will forage from your plants so bone meal definitely yes and you remove any plastic shreds threads you know any sort of twigs dry leaves because they will uh, the plastic will block the aeration this is vermiculite here nice shimmery golden vermiculite comes from volcanic rock it improves the drainage capacity of your soil so I was saying that twigs and leaves will invite fungus for their decay. And we don't know what kind of fungus is coming. Fungus can be good and bad. A little more perlite. Uh, I had it, so I'm using it. Its substitute is sand. If you can get sand, please do add sand and not really perlite. Because this is not very important. Now you mix, mix, mix and mix it very, very well. At the starting uh, stage, when you're a beginner gardener, you need to be very careful. 
I am adding a little metarizum. Metarizum takes care of termite problems. As our base is woody, it will invite termites. And I would not want termites in my potting mix because I don't use any chemical sprays to kill insects. I will sacrifice my plants and all the efforts I'm putting in, but I will not kill insects. A little trichoderma, another fungus. It will build fungus. Fungus microbes, bacteria, viruses, insects, mites, all are important for plants. Everything is important. It's just that sometimes they damage more than they benefit. So you need to bring that balance in your potting mix. Because I travel a lot, I make sure that my potting mix is already healthy and has the immunity to ward off any external attacks. And now it's just water that I'm going to give to my plants and of course compost tea. So in another video, I'll tell you how to make compost tea. But this is potting mix, ready, rich, fluffy, nutritious, porous. It's neither sandy nor clay. You can see. You mix all of the ingredients very well. And even distribution is very important. This is seaweed extract. It provides the minerals which are needed to my potting mix. Otherwise, the soil will do it all on its own. It would be nice if you can add some rhizobiums for your nitrogen activation. Once added all the nutrition, we'll mix it well. And I will also introduce earthworms to my potting mix. I will get earthworms, which I already breed, and I will put them in the potting mix. They'll take care of the rest of the things. And whatever nutrition we have added has already made our potting mix so nice. See here, it's healthy. Uh, if you, uh, when you make this, and if you have children around, I bet they'll want to jump in this and play with it. That's how inviting soil can be. Thank you for watching. Write to me. I would love to help you grow organic vegetables at home. Thank you for watching.